Okay, thank you. Welcome in this room. Uh, thank you for skipping your lunch break and joining me in this session uh, with Py4j and Jibang. Um, I'm Frank, I live here in Belgium, so this is a home match for me. Um, side note, I graduated as a film editor 30 years ago, so this is the first time I'm in the movie theater with my own work. It's a bit uh, ironic that I'm as a, a developer now in a cinema. Um, you can find me on Twitter, I live by the hashtag Java on Raspberry Pi, that's where you find a lot of information about the things I'm doing. I've been programmed since the 80s, when I was a little kid and got the Commodore 64, so I have seen quite some evolution in, in programming languages, and I'm doing Java since uh, about 10 years, uh, when I joined Televic, uh, a Belgian-based company. Um, since just before the summer, I joined Azul. Uh, Azul is one of the sponsors of this event. You can find our boot uh, below in the exhibition hall. Uh, we are an OpenJDK distributor, so we built uh, a version of OpenJDK, actually two versions. Uh, but talk to my colleagues or me if I'm at the boot and I will be happy to give you a lot of information. Um, so I do blog a lot, uh, especially about Java on the Raspberry Pi, uh, that's the subject. And I've also done this blogging on Fuji. Uh, who knows Fuji? Ooh, ooh, not enough people. Um, if there's one link you remember from DevOx, if you go home, it's, it's fuji.io. We are all friends of OpenJDK. So please remember this URL. Uh, it's a website started by Azul, but it's actually by the Java community. Uh, so every day we have a new article there uh, about a topic related to Java, Java, the, 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 the vir virtual machine, the language, the tools on top of it. Uh, we have a ton of information about all the different releases of Java, uh, the command line arguments, all that information is on fuji.io and over 50 articles by me and others uh, of Java on Raspberry Pi. What I'm going to talk to you uh, today in these 15 minutes is exactly one article that has been published on Fuji. There is a video, there is a full uh, description step by step, but I'm going to show you today what it's all about. Uh, if you're wondering why Java on Raspberry Pi, that's a very valid question. It's um, a discussion topic even, but it's my interest, it's my niche, and I have a one hour session tomorrow uh, in room four. Um, I will do some hacking, <coughs> no, I will use this. It may look like a normal PC, but it's actually uh, an experimentation kit with a lot of sensors. I'm gonna show you how you can send values from these sensors to MQTT, to a message broker, and visualize everything in a JavaFX application. Um, that's the story for tomorrow. Now, I hope you know what a Raspberry Pi is. If you're not, these are the Raspberry Pis. They look impressively big on this screen, but actually this is a small one. Uh, this is the Raspberry Pi Zero. Uh, um, that's right, you have them for 5, 11 or 15 euros. The 15 euros is the latest one. It runs Java, it runs Java FX. Keep that in mind, it is a full Linux PC. Eh? I have it here, eh? this, is the, that, this is the device actually. Eh? Um, Raspberry Pi has done some amazing things to fit it in this form factor. This chip that you see here is the, created by Raspberry Pi Foundation or the company. It's actually a CPU on top of the memory. So to fit it on the board, they have done some amazing technically challenging things to get this working. Uh, but it runs Spring, it runs whatever thing you want to put on there with Java, it will work. Not as fast as, eh? but of course, yeah, it's a full PC. Um, the Raspberry Pi 4 is the latest one, is the biggest one because it has a lot of connections. So depending on the use case, you have different um, options of buying a board like this. Uh, little bumper, there is of course an out of stock problem because of ship shortage. Um, we're going to involve two things on this Raspberry Pi. The first one is Pi4j. Pi4j is a Java library to include in your project, but it includes native code to interact with the GPIOs of the Raspberry Pi. The GPIOs are those 40 pins, two rows of 20, on that board where you can connect electronic components, uh, LED, relay, whatever. Uh, a lot of these uh, I will handle tomorrow. Um, I'm a contributor to this project, Py4j. I'm mainly focusing on the documentation, huh? um, but we have uh, several people working on this. It's an open source project. 
we have more and more people joining and creating examples, improving the code. Welcome to take a look. Uh, Pi4j.com, the website, that's where I mainly live within this project. And we're also going to use Gbang. I have no relationship with Gbang. It's just a tool that I found on the internet. I wanted to try it out. What is the goal of Gbang? Is to make it easy to run Java code. For students, for newbies, it can be a bit um, terrifying to start with Java um, because you need a compiler. You need uh, first you need Java to, ins to be installed. You need a compiler or Maven or Gradle or you have to know about all this. And if you're using Maven, you have to f use this structure and a POM file. Gbang wants to remove all of that. Yeah? Um, if you install Gbang, it will also check, do you already have Java? All these steps will be solved by you. Now, uh, le let's start with, I have bought a board. Uh, I've never used it before, I want to start. Uh, there's no operating system on there, so you need an SD card to put in there. Raspberry Pi has created the imager tool. In the imager tool, you select an operating system. Raspberry Pi operating system is the easiest one because it's built for this device. There are a ton of others. There are game consoles, there are media servers, uh, whatever you want to use, there will be something available for this device. Uh, in most cases, just use Raspberry Pi operating system if you want to get started. Um, I will speed this up. Yeah, I didn't dare to do Venkat-like live coding, so <laughs> I'm using video. Um, so if this uh, SD card is ready, you put it in your Raspberry Pi, you plug it into a monitor, you give it power, and it will ask you to create a user account. And after that, you can start using this. So this takes 10, 10 15 minutes, and you are started with your Raspberry Pi. Um, what I usually do, I have a ton of Raspberry Pis on my desk. Uh, I don't juggle with monitors and keyboards. I use a uh, remote desktop. Remote desktop, most of us know from, from Windows. Um, VNC is a Linux uh, alternative. It's pre-installed on the Raspberry Pi. The only thing you need to do is enable it. So Raspberry Pi has in their operating system a tool called sudo raspi-config. And in that tool, you can enable VNC uh, specific protocols. You can change the password of the user, but you can also enable this VNC viewer. If you have done that, uh, you can connect from another PC just by opening a terminal, uh, by opening a connection and you will have the screen just like you would be in front of it. Uh, I'm showing it uh, now also in this uh, ex uh, configuration because I want to copy paste code from a web page to this uh, tool. So I'm using this on a Linux PC. Um, and now of course, yeah, it's about Gbang this presentation. Let's install, install Gbang. It's just a curl command. You copy paste this to your uh, Raspberry Pi, you run it, um, uh, what, what we first do, so this is the basic Raspberry Pi operating system I have put on this SD card. So if you check Java version, there is none. Huh? So it doesn't find Java. So if you now j only install um, Gbang with this curl command, it will install Gbang. During that installation, it will check is there a Java version on this board. It doesn't find it, so it is downloading the latest one, which is uh, for Gbang, the latest one is 11, so a long-term supported version. And when this is done, you can do Java minus version and check uh, that it is indeed installed. There's one thing you should not forget is you need to open a new terminal. And that's because Java, the command Java is linked uh, through, uh, through scripting and that only happens when you open a new terminal. So if you now check Java version, we see it's Java 11. Uh, so we can run Java code. Now, um, why do we need G Gbang even? Because since Java 11, we can create a single Java file, put some code in there and run it. So this will work. So if we create a text file, we put this hello world application in there and we execute it with Java, it will actually call Java C to compile it and then run this class file. Um, with Gbang, we can do exactly the same thing but we need an, an extra line there on top of that. So you would think um, it makes it a bit complicated. Yes, if you only have pure Java, huh? then you can just use Java and execute a Java file. So if we copy paste this code, I don't think I need to tell you what will happen.
And if we so what uh, GBang will actually do is again compile it for us. Eh? So we'll, it will create a jar file and execute the jar file while we have hello world. Now what is hello world in electronics? Um, it's blinking LED. So I have my setup with me, uh, but it looks a bit more impressive on this big screen. Um, what do we do? We connect an LED, a light emitting diode, a flashing light to uh, a light to our Raspberry Pi. In this example, it only also contains a button. So this is based on the minimal example of a Pi4J application. If you want to get started with electronics and Java on a Raspberry Pi, this is the hello world of electronics programming, blinking a LED. Um, so what do we need to tell GBang to download the dependencies? Because we, for this project, we need extra dependencies. If you would have a Maven project, these would be the dependencies we put in our Maven project. For a Gradle project, this would again be the, the dependencies. So at the beginning of the file, we add all the dependencies and the versions. Hmm? And then we have the import commands. And then we just have the normal Java code as if you would have any other kind of project. So in this case, we configure one of these pins of the Raspberry Pi to be a digital output. So we want to toggle it on and off. Uh, there are some basic settings that we need there. And as soon as we have this LED object, which is a, a Java object at this point, we can toggle it on and off, low and high. So we are interacting with electronics, but it is a Java object for our program. And then executing this is just running it with uh, GBang. Same story, but now uh, in a video. Uh, so it's just one single file. Keep this in mind. It's one single file. It contains the dependencies and then the full program. Uh, this full program also reads the state of the button. And now we execute it. And you will see that uh, by executing uh, with GBang, it finds that we declared some dependencies. It will get the dependencies from the Maven repository, I suppose, and it builds it. Now, we have an error. <laughs> um, we cannot have a demo without an error. Um, this is not an issue of GBang. It's an issue of the Pi4j library, and it's an, a long-standing issue. Is uh, You need to execute your application as a sudo user. Um, and that's not a problem if you're doing experiments on your own Raspberry Pi, as soon as you thinking about moving this to production or to some uh, professional use, that's not uh, ideal. It's something we are working on. If anyone wants to join, has ideas on how to fix this, we are checking uh, with another native library inside the project. We will fix this. Definitely, it's not yet fixed. It's an open issue. But uh, unfortunately, um, luckily, we can also execute GBang uh, as um, as a sudo user. So we just have to find out where it was installed, and then instead of sudo gbang, we need the full path. If we execute it like this, it will, um, there's an even a shorter way to write this. If we do this, um, the first time we, we ran gbang, it downloaded already uh, OpenJDK for us, uh, but that was as the pi user. You see my, my user account is a pi, uh, is the account name. Um, there is no um, Java installed yet for the sudo user, so again, it needs to download it. Uh, so that's why this demo will again fast forward a bit. So you see it installs J JDK again, finds the dependencies, they were already downloaded, so it can build the project, and now it will execute. So. No rocket science, I didn't promise that. But we have our LED blinking. And for me, when I started doing these electronic projects uh, and Java on the Raspberry Pi, this was my aha moment. Eh? It works. I can control physical things. I can blink a LED. I can read the state of the button. Eh? And if, th if you press the button five times, your program stops. Um, this is the start. Uh, tomorrow I will tell a lot more about uh, interacting with messaging and sending messages and, and using this with Java FX uh, and why I think that Java on the Raspberry Pi is actually a good idea uh, despite other things. Other things. Um, thank you for joining this very short session. I think I nailed it on 15 minutes. If there are any questions, uh, please come over because we have to get ready for the next user. 
uh, for the next speaker. Um, and I hope to see you tomorrow at uh, the other uh, talk, which will take a bit longer. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.